Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I got my INFP friend Xerix here. You want to introduce yourself? Hello. Uh, I'm an INFP, if that's the most important thing right now. Yes, yes it is. So, what's that all about? What is being an INFP? I understand there are four cognitive functions, right? Yes. Uh, F-I-N-E-S-I-N-T-E. Right. And you, as the INFP, should be able to define what those things are for us, correct? Yeah, I should be able to do that. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll go one by one. Start with uh, FI. FI. It's an acronym. Right. What yes. does it stand for? FI. Yes, it's an acronym for introverted feeling. Um, mm. Big words. So <laughs> this is like my focal point in life. This is... Um, kind of what I see everything through, what I make my decisions off of. And so it's feeling-based, it's introverted. I'm very focused on what I think about things and how I feel about things, my perspective and how things affect me. Um, not to a... Well, it can be, but not necessarily to a selfish degree. Mm -hmm. Um I, I understand that um, this word might have a negative connotation towards it, but I guess because it, it, it makes sense, I think. Would you classify yourself as sensitive, or how do you feel about that word? Can I call you that? Can anyone call you that? Sure. Yeah, sensitive. Uh, I think sensitive is like if you turn the microphone really high up and it was picking up all the sound and further on. So, That's so how I would look at sensitive. So you so you really assess everything emotionally through this um quite receptive lens, I guess. Was this um do you think this is something that like it like came on to you like naturally, or was it just something that like um became like easy to do as you discovered more about yourself? How does that process work? I'm trying to get it because I'm not very mm. feely in that sense. <laughs> well, Okay, so from a young age, I always felt responsible for being true to myself. And I would often get caught up in my emotions, and I would make little stories in my head. And, uh... And I, an idealization process, let's say. Right. And, you know, as I got older, I figured out... I'm still figuring it out. I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. It's just really figuring figuring out who I am, how I want to be. Um, but I th I think I've all I've always kind of known. Um, it's just been there, some feeling. So, I guess I could ask you again why that's super important, but I feel like that would be kind of like repetitive then. I guess in contrast to like the things that like you're saying, how does it make you feel in comparison to, I guess, people that don't necessarily care so much about their, let's say, own individuality. Maybe they more so want to be like everyone else, not necessarily like express yourself, like, so to speak. Is the concept of that just like super alien, let's say, or like not understandable? Yeah, it's, it's strange. I, and I, I realized that with time that people... I, I used to just think that everyone was bad. Oh, really? That everyone was kind of, you know, except for my friends. But I even thought that my friends were kind of were kind of weird, too. And then I, I realized that the majority of people aren't stuck in that lens like I am. So I'm going to say stuck in there because I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. But it's just it, how I operate. It's just different, I guess, yeah. So mm -hmm. from like what I understand is that like you've noticed like early on just how like unnecessarily conformist other people are. Yes, yeah, some are. Um, I relate to that. I relate yeah. to that as an FE inferior person myself personally. But um, hmm. I guess I wouldn't necessarily talk about like individuality. Just yeah, whatever like like makes sense, quote unquote. But um. Expressing yourself, I see, is like extremely mm -hmm. important to you. So I guess that if you didn't have that, you would lose the essence of yourself, I imagine. 
Right. Yeah, that's something I'll, I want to avoid. Uh, I want to avoid putting myself in positions that I'm not going to be able to be who I want to be. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know. It could get cheesy real fast. But um, I was just thinking about introverted decider functions, and I think mm -hmm. we really get a kick out of figuring something out for ourselves. For sure, for sure. You know, where, whether if it's TI, I mean, are we allowed to talk about you? You know, I mean, how do you if, feel if, like if you, you have anything to ask me in contrast to you? Sure. If like if if it's leading somewhere where yeah, no, there's a contrast. <laughs> yeah. So if the introverted decider function wants to figure something out themselves, what is it that we're figuring out? Depending like, like, on whether or not we're, or whether we're thinking or feeling. Yeah, we find our own baseline rather than everybody else who seems to operate on somebody else's baseline. Let's say society or mm -hmm. like whatever. It's just too con like constricted, I guess, is what, what you would say. You and I would say, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that goes along with any, which we'll cover in a moment. Yeah, Oops. yeah. Okay. What What is any? Oh, yeah, we could do that right now. Okay. So well, yeah, I mean, any you had, you is... had more to say about like 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 FI. No, it's fine. Uh, no, they kind of all go together. So, um, yeah, NE, NE is always searching for possibilities and concepts, and it's just this. It's my most comfortable mode of thinking, where. Uh, I like to be able to see possibilities and things and open things up, understand things, mm -hmm. understand and see beyond what uh, is just given to us in the first place. I don't know if that makes sense. I think so, yeah. Because I'm just like, do you ever just feel like people are too pompous when they've already like like decided they have like our particular like linear thing already figured out? At least that's how I feel. Yeah, when I when I deal with like any and people don't want to entertain mm. like other possibilities, let's say. Yeah, yeah, we we like entertaining things, entertaining possibilities, and that's comfortable for us, I guess. Yeah, you could say like more than meets the eye, ultimately. Mm hmm. I liked what you said earlier about, I guess, just like fantasizing or like creating like stories or something. Because like I imagine, yeah, this is really where like the your fi and any come to place, right? Oh yes, yeah, any, um, and yes, um, hmm. yeah, creating these little sad tales in my head. Okay, why? Well, okay, let's uh, let's explore that further. Then let's give people the F I N E thing going on here. Why are they typically sad stories? You felt the need to say that, so like, you know, tell us more about that. Sad. Um. Do you think the world is sad? Because I would get it if you did. <laughs> okay, so I think there's a reason behind it. I like to. So okay, I can be very sensitive. Oh, yeah, we didn't cover this yet. The sensitivity. Oh, yeah, then go on. Yeah, yeah. That was like another video. Okay, so I'm going to try and make a big point here, but there it has, you have to understand a lot of things. Um, take your time. Take your time. We're here. All right, all right. So let's, you know, I think FI might be the most sensitive function, and I would define sensitivity as you're picking up and feeling more things and you're seeing more things. Mm -hmm. um, you're experiencing more inside. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, what that means is things can hurt a little mm -hmm. more. So, I like to be sad. And I like to tell myself bad stories sometimes because sound like a masochist. <laughs> no, because it's a form of protecting myself. Oh really? Yeah. So, you know, I might stop myself from being excited because 
the feeling of being excited for something and it not working out uh, can hurt. Just that, that fall. And I feel like I'm always trying to protect myself from that. Um, oh, that's uh, that's pretty interesting because I've always seen online that like INFPs get stereotyped as like emo, this and this and that, or like, yeah, just basically like extremely like emotional and things like that. But I've never actually heard anyone like go into like why. So I know this is what you're saying, but would you say that a lot of INFPs probably operate under this basis that like why these negative emotions typically come about is because like, it's a form of protective shield, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But it's not it's not the strong thing to do. Um so you want to move away from that. Yeah, really uh as you develop your NE, mm. you become more comfortable with uh you're more open-minded, more optimistic. Mm. So Hmm. So there's a like like you you try to treat your any I imagine as like hope I guess like hopeful beginnings rather than mm -hmm. the sad the sad. It brings you up and out of this thing. We could actually go down to the next function, which is gonna okay. Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, introverted sensing SI. So this is kind of the pat. This is the past. This mm -hmm. is um more concrete. It can be details. It can be memories. It can be a memory of how you felt. Something that's happened, something you've experienced. I, I imagine. And, it is. Yeah. So this whole sadness stereotype mm -hmm. of the INFP is are people who are stuck. Mm -hmm. We're not sad, but like sulking, just like stuck and they're and uh, nothing's happening. They're mm -hmm. stuck in their FI and their S SI. Mm -hmm. So they're just looping around, thinking about the past, and um, just feeling sad and miserable. Tra trapped in those feelings, basically. Right, and that's that's the INFP's loop. <laughs> Is yeah, you're not going anywhere. You're stuck in the past. You're stuck in your emotions. Mm. So, but uh, but NE is like the hero of that. So it brings you up and out. It's like no, there's new things. You can be greater than this. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, yeah, from, like, what I understand, you can easily be trapped in certain feelings. I guess it's, like, it has something to do mm -hmm. with, like, the impact that it placed on you, right? And that's how the feelings are so personal. And that's why it keeps looping with, like, the SI, FI, SI thing. Yeah, that loop going on. <laughs> mm hmm I think uh, also a big thing, INFPs feel a huge responsibility to figure out their emotions or to... Um, break them down and express them in some way or live them out. It's just, we're just very focused on them. I mean, some not so much, actually. If you're... But I, I, I imagine for you, it never leaves you alone. That's why you keep fixating on it. That's why you keep poking at it. Yeah, it's always there. Yeah. Do you classify that almost as like an itch you need to scratch? Like you'll never be able to function properly until like, like that thing is like removed. <laughs> Not removed, but like people have to it. remind me that it doesn't matter sometimes, and they're right. Sometimes it just got to do something, and I don't have to have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. um, I just got to move on. Oh, it's just for you trying not to be stagnant, right? Yeah, it can be bad sometimes where I'm just stuck. Um, I'm just stuck in remorse or. <laughs> some depression or anxiety hmm. and I just keep looping back to the past and someone might have to remind me or it might something might inspire me. It could be music. I found music it inspires me a lot and it brings me out of things. When you uh like make music, what what is it about it that feels more free rather than let's say I guess Trapped in like metaphorical chains, so to speak. How does that process work? Hmm. There's something exhilarating about it. Uh, the, when it comes to creating music, when I am in the flow, it's really exciting because I'm creating something. It's like I'm. It feels organic. It's like 
cooking or something. <laughs> it, it's cool. And you're like, yeah, I made this for myself, you know? Interesting. Interesting. So, I guess it makes sense to get to, like, I guess, like, the last and, like, final function, one that, like, you kind of struggle with unless you had any, like, last-minute, like, inputs about the previous functions. Oh, I wouldn't say any likes to relate things to other things in a very abstract way. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I've been doing that a bit. I think we both do that. We're like, we understand things. We see the world by, or we comprehend it by saying, well, this thing is like this thing. And that's like this. And that's also like our SI. It's like this thing that I've seen before. Mm -hmm. This concept is like that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that. That's a, I didn't want to skip that. Yeah, yeah, the last function. Yeah, that makes Extroverted sense. Extroverted thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to head into this because I think it kind of makes sense based on like the things like you've been saying. You've been talking about how like you as an INFP or maybe even INFPs in general, but let's just say like you specifically don't want to like be stuck into something. So like let's say like your SI is like I guess like trapping you in like certain feelings and. You can use NE to see more like hopeful beginnings, quote unquote. But I guess actualizing, and maybe this is the thing that like you kind of struggle with, would be the TE, right? Like actually putting things into play. Mm -hmm. This yeah. might be, yeah, this Sometimes might be. Sometimes you got to take something and you got to go outside of yourself, and that can be scary. Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I am very TI based, and TE is your inferior. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to cover this like as eloquently. But, like, yeah, we'll try. Mm -hmm. I guess, like, I want you to talk more, I guess, because I guess this is primarily where that conversation leads towards, like, how hard it could be to, like, do something. Like, like what are what are your personal struggles with that? Like, trying to TE, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not... Uh, well, the struggle would only come from not doing it so often, so you're not good at it. But, really, it's this fear. Uh, it's a fear that it's going to take you away from what truly matters to you, the the TE. So just, you have to function in this world. You have to operate somehow at some point. Mm. And that's probably one of the most stressful parts of my life is when I, I have to do something that I don't care about, but I need to do. <laughs> How do you uh, <clears throat> how do you uh, respond to because like I imagine stereotypically like strong TE people are just like you're just lazy bro blah 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 this and this and that how how do you how do you address perspectives like that? Oh, it's not that I don't have the energy. I mean, maybe I don't, but it's I'm um, just I'm in my comfort zone, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, this is what I like, and this is what is familiar to me. And then I'm like, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta call someone, I gotta go to this place, I gotta, you know, do this thing. Um, it's not terrible, it's not the end of the world, it's just my least favorite thing to do. It's like, annoying, to say the least. I'm mm -hmm. trying to find a word that's like, um... Oh, TE and written, sometimes it's... It's like regurgitating empirical facts. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for me. I have been way easier time just speaking from my own perspective, mm -hmm. so I can't really argue. Do you feel like, like you're, Do you feel like you're too good for empirical facts? <laughs> I don't know. If that's a way to put it. What I'm I am not too good. I I'm just kind of indifferent to them. I see them as like helpful. Mm -hmm. Like, if I really care about something, I'll pull some facts. I'll be like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'll use them, but I don't tie myself to them. I don't really feel the need to tell people things. You know? I get you. You're just, like, do, like doing your own thing, basically. Mm-hmm. But, um... Do you want to improve in terms of TE? Do you see any pros that were to come along if you were to hypothetically develop that? Inferior function is hard for anybody, I imagine, but it's like, 
do you uh i guess that's fundamentally a question that i ought to ask like do you care to get along with it do better with it blah blah, blah. uh when i get around to it uh hmm do i care yes i mean i want to build my career mm-hmm. and i know that's going to take a lot of te and I'm going to have to do a lot of things that make me very uncomfortable. For sure, for sure. But I'm going to try and take pride in that. In doing things that make me uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, no no pain, no gain, right? I guess that that's what you're mm-hmm. saying. Right. So, you know, there's just growth there. It's just an opportunity. Right. It's like my, that's my demon in life. Got to go at it. I get you, because it's like, I guess like inside, it already feels like you could have already done so many things that you've wanted to do, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's just how it feels, having like an introverted, yeah, like like judging function, like heading all the way. <laughs> that, that's what, that's how right. I feel a lot of times, honestly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm always internally judging things, and it's, sometimes I don't want to let something out of the oven just quite yet. So, uh, that causes me to be quiet most of the time. It, is it because, like, you have something special that you want to retain within yourself, like, with it, or, like, it's not ready for the world yet? Like, w- w- what does that mm-hmm. involve? Well, I think it's it just it's just that fear of, like, not being understood. I think having fear of TE is, like, you kind of know that you don't really know anything. Except the things that you do. Like, there are things that I definitely do know and I, I can understand them. But then there's other subjects that I'm like... I mean... I can't even... Uh, yeah. Hmm. I've hyper-focused on things that really matter to me, but usually things like... like, politics, mm-hmm. especially, I... I don't really care about them so i don't know anything about it and have to avoid those types of conversations i mean because like you know that like it's just landmines everywhere like if you say something someone's going to be real about it yeah and that's stressful i hate that i don't i don't like arguing with people i don't see a point in it but you know you do that and you're good at it you you get people riled up well thank you thank you uh (laughs) but just i could do that i couldn't hmm well i mean Good for you, honestly. Less less drama in your life. I'm not saying there's a lot of drama in my life, but at least like, it's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean that's cool, honestly, because I guess like I'm imagining from like your point of view, you kind of just avoid that, so you're just more like relaxed and like peaceful. I'm fine having those debates, arguments with people, like quote unquote. But then again, I, I will admit, at times after I'm done, I'm just like, why did I even bother to do that? Like, like it was just whatever like if it didn't happen Mm. it would have made no difference anyway so i'm just like yeah i don't know why i kind of step into those things at all admittedly so i guess it's like you know i'm telling you this i imagine you're already like yeah exactly (laughs) yeah i can i see what you're saying and i can see the difference between us and it's interesting Mm. i think you know fi is all about respecting individuality and just like you know you kind of just let people do their thing Mm mm-hmm or TI might be like, no, that's 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 wrong. Exactly. You know? It's like you have no like you have like no leg to stand on because da 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 Right. Hmm. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We got like twenty four minutes here, so I think there's a lot of mm-hmm. things here for like people to analyze if they've made it this far, so do you have any like last minute like closing remarks? Well, I hope the video made sense and it was nice to listen to if you made it this far. That's all. Yeah, thanks uh thanks for being on, man. I really appreciate you being on. Well, thanks for having me. All right. <laughs> Goodbye everybody. Goodbye.